Apple has defined its new silicon as a system on chip, so processor and graphics all in one. Does this spell the end for Macs with discrete GPUs from AMD? Can Apple hope to get anywhere near the performance of a discrete GPU with its own silicon? Let's take a look at what we know and see if we can make some more predictions. The fastest of Apple's current chips for graphics performance is the A12X and A12Z or Z as found in the iPad Pro. And let's start by looking at how it scores in Geekbench 5's Metal Benchmark and seeing how it compares to other graphics cards. So let's go to the Geekbench 5 benchmark charts for Metal. Now this is basically a, a league table of results with each being the average score for all of the user benchmarks that have been completed and submitted back to Geekbench. As always, your iPad may score higher than this average, but that's true for any model of GPU on the list. And we also need to disregard any Nvidia GPUs on this list because very few of them are supported in Mac OS and in any case, they tend to underperform with Apple's Metal framework. So the majority of scores here for Nvidia cards are much lower than the actual potential performance of that GPU. Let's start by finding Apple's A12 CPU. So if we just uh, search for A12, there we go. So we found the, the Apple A12X GPU and it scores 9,105. Now, I don't see the A12Z on this list anywhere, um, but it is basically the same chip as the A12X, though it does score a little bit higher. Uh, you can see just below the A12X score is the Iris Plus graphics scoring 8502. Uh, this is the onboard graphics that feature in Intel's latest 10th generation CPUs, as found in the 2020 13 inch MacBook Pro, the four port version. So already the Apple chips are outperforming Intel's. And bear in mind that the A12 is about two years old now. So I think we can safely expect that the first Mac specific Apple Silicon chips will have better performance than this. And we'll dig into that in a moment. But first, let's just reflect that for every Mac without a discrete GPU, Apple Silicon will be a step up in graphics performance from anything that Intel offers. There are quite a few Apple models without discrete GPUs. There's the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro 13 inch, the Mac mini, and there's the entry level 21 inch iMac. That's the one without the 4K display. And those computers represent a decent chunk of Apple's consumer lineup. And if you do step up to the 4K 21 inch iMac, the first discrete GPU on offer is the Radeon Pro 555X. So let's have a look on the Geekbench chart to see where that scores. So if we scroll up the list here, we find, there it is, look, the Radeon Pro 555X, it scores 13,424. So it's not actually that far ahead of the A12X, and it's probably safe to say that the new Apple Silicon will be faster than this. Now, how fast does it need to get? If we scroll up the list, we can find the AMD Radeon Pro 5300M, and you can see it scores 24,349. Uh, this is the GPU that's in the base model of the MacBook Pro 16 inch. The fastest GPU that you can specify for that notebook is the 5600M, and that is an expensive option, but it's a decent performer. As you can see, it scores 40,804. And it's not actually that far behind the AMD Radeon Pro Vega 48 look, which is just below 50,000. Uh, that's the highest GPU that you can spec in the consumer iMac, the 27 inch 5K model. Let's jump all the way to the top of the list where we find the Radeon Pro Vega 2 Duo. Uh, this is a module that's available for the 2019 Mac Pro, and again, it's not cheap. It actually features two Vega 2 cards on one module. Uh, now, because Geekbench 5 isn't multi-GPU aware, this score that you're seeing here, 97,208, is for just one of those cards. So with the Duo, there are two cards on board, and you can actually specify two of those modules in the Mac Pro. Uh, if money is no object, of course. So that's four Vega 2 cards with 32 gigs of HBM2 video RAM on each of those four cards. And you can essentially quadruple that score to get an idea of the overall potential performance of those video cards. Uh, naturally, you'd have to have software that fully takes advantage of those multiple GPUs. Now, how is Apple Silicon going to compete with that? particularly when Apple haven't said anything about retaining discrete GPU options, at least not yet. They've only given information on the benefits of the onboard GPU. So let's just sidestep and consider those benefits for a moment. The GPU and the CPU within Apple Silicon will share the same memory. In fact, the GPU will have a small amount of memory reserved for it, known as tile memory. 
This reduces the number of times the GPU has to access shared system memory. When it does access the shared memory, it's fast. With a discrete GPU, data has to be copied from the system RAM to the video RAM via PCI Express. It's much more intensive, and it's not as quick as being able to simply address the memory directly. Of course, modern GPUs are so powerful, and they've got so much onboard video RAM that performance doesn't suffer. However, if you scale up Apple Silicon to similar levels of performance, this more efficient architecture would make a very big difference. And what this means is that Apple doesn't have to match the raw performance of the AMD GPUs we've looked at. Through careful optimization of their system-on-chip design and the Metal Graphics framework, they can get the onboard GPU to punch well above its weight. Let's be realistic, though. We're still not going to be matching these high-performing AMD cards just yet. Will discrete GPUs remain a feature of Apple Macs? Well, yes, at least for now, anyway. The question is perhaps more a case of, do most of us actually need discrete graphics cards in our computers? And bear with me on this one. If you take that MacBook Pro 16-inch, sure, you can spec that beefy 5600M GPU. But in day-to-day -day use, how often does it actually kick in? If you run Activity Monitor and you watch your GPU usage, you might be surprised at how little the discrete GPU is actually working. What you're using most of the time is the onboard graphics. In this case, Intel UHD 630. And that doesn't even have half the performance of the A12 chip we've just been looking at. The GPU in the A12 is fast enough for editing photos, and it's fine for most basic consumer video editing needs as well. You can run some pretty impressive games on it. Sure, not AAA titles at the top settings, but basic gaming isn't a problem. And do we need more GPU performance for video editing? It helps sometimes, but it does depend which codecs you work with. I'm increasingly finding that rendering is CPU-bound or handled by the T2 chip in modern Macs. Apple has perhaps already shown their hand in this regard by creating the Afterburner module for the 2019 Mac Pro. Uh, this is a card that's specifically designed for hardware acceleration of ProRes video codecs. So with this new architecture and new silicon designs, are we actually looking at a paradigm shift? where tasks that used to rely on powerful GPUs will now be handled by a combination of purpose-built cores, CPU, GPU, custom modules, and software optimization. Of course, there are still lots of use cases where people do need massive GPU power. And Apple will need to continue catering for those users. So that means that discrete GPUs will need to continue being a thing until Apple can provide similar performance by other means. I think for most consumers, you don't need to worry. Uh, but for Pro users, maybe it's a case of patiently watching and waiting. I seriously doubt that Apple hasn't planned for this, and I wonder if they may have an ace hidden up their proverbial sleeve. Uh, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please consider supporting the channel with just one click of the subscribe button. It makes a huge difference to a small creator like me, so thank you all so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. Now, of course, you may not agree with me, it's not like I've got any inside information, so put forward any ideas and thoughts you may have in the comments section, and I look forward to seeing what you guys have got to say. Hopefully I did enough to earn a thumbs up, or a thumbs down if that's your thing. In any case, I'll see you next time for some more geekery.